Okay, well, it's 1101. Friends, thank you very much for joining us for this next section session of the OKLIS. Uh, I guess Summit is in there. I don't need to say Summit, but I will anyway, uh, over and over again. Um, we are looking forward to hearing Ali Sharp present about baby steps in podcasting. Uh, and the session will go till 1125. Uh, we have kept this as a meeting format rather than webinar to encourage interaction and conversation in the chat. The session is being recorded as you noticed when you came in. Uh, you're welcome to rename, mute, uh, or let us know if you're uncomfortable with that in some other way. Uh, Ali, take it away. Thank you so much. That's lovely. That's so lovely and professional. All right. So yes, this is Baby Steps and Podcasting. I'm Ali Sharp. And I am from Langston University. So a little bit about me. Um, again, I'm at Langston. I'm an instructional designer, but I'm also the director of faculty development. And that is where the podcasting comes in. My email is sharpa at langston.edu. So if, you, if there's anything in this and you're like, I would like to do this or have suggestions for me on how I could do it better, uh, feel free to email me. So let me tell you a little bit about my podcast. <clears throat> it's called LU Monday Moment. And one of the first things I learned was to find a name that's easy for people to remember and look up. So that's where I came to that. I currently do it once a week. It's on Apple and Spotify. And my audience is LU instructors. So anyone who doesn't teach at Langston would probably find it to be too specific because it's about events that are happening through faculty development. And it fills a specific need. Anyone that um, works at Langston, or if you haven't, we have four campuses, um, Langston, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, and Ardmore. So I wanted to be able to reach everyone across the different campuses and almost everyone at Langston commutes, often from Edmond, Stillwater, Guthrie, Oklahoma City. So I wanted to create a quick faculty development piece that could be used on a commute or like if somebody wanted to take a break and walk across campus or just have a cup of coffee. I didn't want it to be, I wanted it to be like an easy breezy thing. And so when I was making a list of all these kind of things I wanted, that's what led me to, oh, I could do it like a podcast. Um, I didn't start off thinking I'll do a podcast. I started off thinking I need to fill this need that we have multiple campuses and they commute and nobody can be at the same place at the same time. And then podcast became the solution. So what is your experience with podcasts, either doing podcasts, listening to podcasts, um, drop it in the chat with your experience. And if you have no experience, that's fine too. Um, my experience was listening to podcasts. I like listening. Yes, Margo's there. Oh, and Simon's like, yeah, it's good to have it for the commute. I agree, thank you. Jamie Holmes is listening. So yeah, so we have some experience here on listening with podcasts and that's what I, where I started to. Um, Simon started it, oh, doing the RES feeds by hand, RSS feeds, and he's been involved with podcasts. So I'm so glad, Simon, you'll be able to be a voice of someone who knows what they're doing. Um, and I want to be open with that, with everyone, their baby steps, because that's where I am. You know, like you wouldn't go to a toddler for advice on being an Olympian. Uh, this is like a toddler showing you how to do a podcast. Um, so yeah, it's kind of one of those things where there's always space to learn. So let me give you an overview of what we're talking about today and where, how I got to this. Um, I started a podcast without knowing how, um, and having saved episodes saved me. So if you start a podcast, save a couple episodes in advance so that no matter what, you have something there in the podcasting world. Um, a set schedule is expected. It's fine to have one-off episodes, but when I was filling out the forms for Apple and Spotify and things like that, they asked when the schedule would be. And the schedule makes it easier for me because I need to build in that time 
And it makes it easier for everyone else because they know like, oh, on Monday, I'm going to hear from faculty development. Everything takes longer than it should. Um, recording and editing of five minute podcasts can take an hour or so more. Um, putting it up online is automatic in the way I'm going to show you, but it seems like Apple must somehow sometimes be scanning them for clean language because I marked mine as clean language or something. So Apple, it might show up in 30 minutes. It might show up in eight hours. So for a Monday podcast, I actually have it done over the weekend and I have it set to go up by Sunday. Um, so that way it'll be for sure ready on Monday. I share both a transcript and an audio, partly obviously with accessibility in mind that people can get to it however works best for them, that universal design piece. Um, also it helps because not everyone knows how to use a podcast. And when people want to search for things, it's easier to search on a transcript. Like if you're looking in your email for it, they can search the transcript for what I was talking about. Um, so today I'm going to talk, share what works for me. And if there are things that work for you or that you have better solutions, by all means, please share them with me um, because that has improved my whole, if you, that has improved greatly on how I've been doing the podcast. So I use Zoom. And first, the reason I use Zoom is because our university has it. Um, it does automatic transcription by speaker. So when I download the transcript, it shows me the name of each person's Zoom account. And it also records the meeting as audio. Like it, it records it as a video, but it also records just the audio. And that becomes important because I can use that in the podcast. Like I trim it out and put it into the podcast. I host all the podcasts through Anchor FM. I've tried a few different ones. Um, at first, I just put it in email as audio and it was going to be like a pretend podcast. And then Jason Henderson, who works across the hall, was like, no, I think you can put it on Apple. And he we kind of re researched things that day and tried some different options. And then um, Anchor is where I ended up landing after talking. I, I talked to some people in the communications departments at Langston because I tried like three platforms and Anchor seemed like it was working. Um, and then Daniel Thompson at Langston's Communications, he uses it with his class. So Anchor FM is the way to go. I've tried three or four different versions. Um, it will add the podcast to Apple and Spotify automatically. And it's app, it has an app and a website and you can record, you can edit, you can add music, which I haven't done yet. Um, and you can publish it right from there. So if you're thinking about it, just start with Anchor FM and that will save you like two weeks worth of, of work. The next tool I always use is Microsoft Word Online because it creates transcripts. So whether I'm recording it on Zoom, which is what I do if I'm interviewing multiple people or Anchor FM, if it's just me or I'm building like me plus Zoom recordings, I get my final transcript from Word Online because it creates the transcripts and it's really easy for me to share in email because we use Office 365. So those are my tools. First thing I do is when I'm doing a recording, so just to be clear, if it's just me, I just go straight to Anchor FM. If I'm recording an interview on Zoom, um, I record it to the cloud, not to the computer that I'm in. I, record, I make sure that I've checked that I want it to record an audio file, and I make sure to check that I want it to create a transcript. And it does have the option to create a closed captioning file which I haven't used, used the closed captioning files yet, but I would if I did a, a video version. So I haven't marked that anyway. Um, I've done most of the interviews over Zoom. When I did them in, our, in the building, um, we still had to do it with social distancing and I used Adobe Audition for that. So in Zoom, when I go to settings or when you go to settings, there's an option that says recording. And I had to check these to record audio only files and record one audio file for all participants. If you do separate audio files for each participant, sometimes it still crosses over. It gets confused about who's talking. 
So for me, it's worked better to just do one audio. And then I save um, the, the file down here at the very bottom, it might be blocked by the transcript, but I create audio transcript because that way when I'm reviewing it, I can kind of read it and see like, oh, I need to just go ahead and skip in 15 minutes because that's where it actually has it. Then on Anchor FM, I love it because it's free and it stays free and it keeps the recordings. So Anchor FM, it adds it to Apple and Spotify every day or every week when I put it in there. I can schedule it in advance. So if it's Monday morning and I record mine for next Monday, I can set it to automatically publish it. And then I can do it on the computer, but I can also do it on my phone app, which is very nice. So Anchor FM, I can also download that final file because I have to email it to people. Inside Anchor, it asked me to, about my podcast and that's where I came up with the name and the description. So when I have people on, I call it Coffee Talk. And then my description is it's a grab a cup of coffee or listen for your drive for a burst of information and like information and inspiration about Langston University faculty and adjunct instructors. So I try to make it clear who it's for. Anybody can listen, but I'm the people I'm speaking to are a very specific audience. Um, I made the cover art in Adobe uh, Express, which I talked about last week on OCO, but they actually have some pre-done on um, an anchor if you want to use theirs. And then I chose the podcast category as education. And then um, I said that it was clean. So that was one of those settings as well. And then I had to do my account settings and um, it, it, re it wanted a website. It was really Apple that wanted a website. So I made a Canvas course and put it in. If you don't have something like that, then just use your school address, you know, but it did want a website. So on the top uh, right, every, this is on the computer version, it gives the choice to upload. So if I've done it all in Zoom, then I can just quickly upload it or record it. And then I can just record from the start. So that's in the top right on the website. And, This is what that screen looks like. Like I'm telling you, this is super easy. I can record it right from the browser. I can upload it. I can use previously recordings. Like sometimes I'll have like a half hour conversation that I'm going to split it up into three because I want my podcast to be pretty short. Um, so you can split them up and use them. So these are the baby step versions. These top two, these three, they feel more advanced to me. I haven't gotten there yet, but you can add songs from Spotify and you can add music and sound effects. So um, they have more options than what I've discovered. So if somebody knows how to use those, by all means, please learn it, share it. You can come back next year and do it, a, a, you know, elementary steps because we're in baby steps right now. So. Once I've recorded it, it's on Anchor, I'll download it, which I know seems like it's backwards, but I wanna make that transcription. So this is in Word Online. And if you are not familiar with this feature, I would not be surprised because it's kind of new. Um, in Word Online, if you come over to the dictate button, you'll see an option that says transcribe. And you may have to give it microphone permission, even though you're not actually using the microphone, that tool seems to want it. So for this to work, be sure that you say it can have that. And then I take the downloaded video and I drop it in. So I, it's gonna be doing this in progress. And while it's transcribing my audio, I do other uh, things because this becomes the document I share. So I go up to the title bar and I give a title. Um, this was one of our best ones, have a perfect, have a perfect day with Dr. Delk. Um, so if you ever need to, a burst of inspiration, this was really good. Then I put in the direct link because I want people to um, be able to get it from the document. 
Okay, and then you can see over on the right side, the transcription is done and I could make changes um, if I needed to correct any spellings or anything. And then I can add it directly to the document and I choose with speakers. Okay, this is where the magic happens. Then I come in and I do find and replace. Speaker one is me. So I have it change all the speaker ones to Ali Sharp. And then speaker two is whoever I interviewed. So then I have speaker two and I replace it with that. That is how I do my automatic transcript. And then I send that to everyone. I always, that part that says audio file, it puts it in so that it can be heard. But when you mail it, when you attach it, it can't be heard because it's only in the online version. So um, just so you know. So I usually delete that audio file and just keep the direct link in there. But that's how I do the transcript part. So it's actually crazy fast. That's the fastest part of the whole thing. And it gives me time to get it all organized. And then I send it to everyone. Um, I send it often, I send it the actual audio file because I have to teach people how to use podcasts and I've done some faculty development sessions on it and I've made handouts. So if you're like, I wanna teach people to use podcasts, you can use the stuff that I made, which I copied and pasted. But this is what my email looks like. Um, you can see I have the audio attached and I have like the, if I am talking about trainings that are coming up, I have those assessments or like this one says rethinking assessments. I have any handouts or anything that I need. And so there's actually four attachments because I have the transcript and some other things. And then I give like the short highlights because some people won't listen. And I, my goal was to meet people where they were to get them faculty development information. For some people, that's a podcast. For some people, that's a bulleted list. Um, and so then I also put it on our Canvas page and I've created a repository. I link it in. And in that link, I have um, the direct links to the podcast. And I have, and the, um, the transcript down at the bottom might be hiding it, but I have the podcast here and then I have how to listen to it. And I also did like a Zoom session. And then I put them in by date and the title and I actually make some of them discussions so that if people wanted to respond to it, they could. Like I've tried some different styles. Um, so you can kind of see here they are and they're all usually, they're all under 10 minutes pretty much. Uh, that's my goal. Some Most of them are under five minutes if it's just me. Um, about Adobe Audition, if you if your school has Creative Cloud or if you have it, people who know what they're doing use Adobe Audition. Langston University Communications Department does it. Um, ASU has these awesome free webinars, and they had one called How to Podcast for Free. It was an Eventbrite workshop, and they um, and they talked about Adobe Audition. So I learned how to use it. But I am not one of those people. I use the really simple tools that are right in front of me just because I'm still learning it. Um, but people who want to do like the transitions and have a lot of special effects um, or people who need to correct audio because there was a noisy environment, um, like NPR style, you know, where you have typewriters in the background and stuff, um, Adobe Audition is what you could use. I can help you with all the steps I've shown you. I am not yet ready to help anybody with Adobe Audition. So if you're getting into podcasting, these are your next steps. First, figure out your audience. When can they listen? And how do you want them to feel after they're done? I want everyone to feel uplifted and I want them to feel like they have the information they need. So that drives what I say. Uh, figure out how often you can set aside time to interview if you want to do interviews, how often you can edit, re record, transcribe, and share, because like I said, it's going to take longer than you think. So if the answer is you can only do that once a month, then your podcast can only be once a month. Um, set a routine schedule when you do all that stuff and when the podcast comes out so that people know, like people know mine will come out on Monday. Um, start with Anchor FM. Even if you do nothing else, just start there and they will walk you through all the steps. 
And be sure to email the audio, the transcript, and offer to show people how to find it. If you're going to an audience you know, if you're doing it to a broad audience, I would I would probably put that on Twitter or Instagram or however you reach people. Um, but get that transcript ready. And then it reaches who it reaches. Sometimes a lot of people listen to it from our faculty. Sometimes it looks like not very many, but I'm planning to be able to repurpose some of the audio later on for um, uh, modules that I wanna make for new faculty. But even if it only reaches one or two or three people, that's still three people who didn't have that information before. And that is my goal. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from people. Um, so the people who it does reach, it's useful to them. And the people who it's not useful for them, they just don't listen to it. And it, you know, it, they just move on with their lives. So that is where I am. I am at Langston. My podcast is LU Monday Moment. Please don't feel obligated to listen to it. I just wanted to put it in there, you know, have three things. And then my email is sharpe at langston.edu. So do you have any questions or comments that I can help with? I'm looking and seeing. I hope you're seeing all the great feedback in the chat. Okay, does someone have a question? Yes. I thought I heard someone unmute just as I did. Okay, well, this is Kathy. I do, first of all, thanks so much for scoping it as baby steps and pointing out that the next step is elementary steps. I feel like that very much gives me permission to start at this very beginning and experiment with what you said. Um, you said it reaches who it reaches. Um, does this system, are you able to collect metrics? How do you know, is there a way built into the platform for you to collect that data? Yes, thank you for asking that. Both Apple and the Anchor FM, which Anchor FM is owned by Spotify, they give metrics. And so they'll say like seven people listen today. Um, and then Office 365, it doesn't show, none of this shows who, but Office 365 shows me how many people have opened that email or used that file. So usually I would say 40% of the 160 people that I email, 40% of them get into it the first day, whether they're reading the transcript or listening to the podcast. And then throughout the week, about 75 people either get into the email or listen to the podcast. And I just bunch it together because like I'm saying, like I said, it's about for me, it's about getting that information out. But yes, you can get the metrics of how long and I could see how often like which ones people go back to quite a bit. Um, the first ones I did was a series with the librarian and we did one interview and then I cut it up into three. And that is what. The one about how to use text a librarian is the one that goes back the most frequently. And the one, um, there's one about deadlines, one about rubrics that's really popular. And the one about Dr. Delk where he's talking about getting ready for midterms. Um, and then there's some that are specific to research that we've been talking about. Um, like there's one that was about giving surveys so it's nice because not everybody can go and give a presentation for faculty development. They just don't have the bandwidth, but a lot of people have time to record a podcast introduction for three or four minutes. That's awesome. And I love that you said, think about how you want your audience to feel afterwards. It's a nice uh, low stakes goal to, to be considering. Any other questions or comments for Ali Sharp? All right, thank you. And you all are welcome to email me. And right. I'm happy to help you as much as I can, or I can find somebody to help you if you want somebody who knows more than me. Excellent. And if you're watching the recording, she means it and she's responsive. Her email is there on the side, S-H-A-R-P-A at langston.edu. And we thank you for joining us and look forward to connecting with the people that watch the recording later as well. This is fantastic, uh, definitely adequate. <laughs> and really even beyond, uh, which is what I assumed it would be. So thank you so much for joining, friends. We'll see you at the other sessions. Thank you.